Hi, my name is Barry Parisian. I'm a denturist and the owner of the Parisian Denture Clinic in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. And today I wanted to talk about how we repair dentures. It's something I find that people are often confused about when they come in to see us. Uh, a lot of people think that we just super glue a set of teeth back together and that's all there is to the repair. But there is much more going on than just gluing a set of dentures back together. Now, in order to do this video, we need a broken denture. And I could have taken a video of me repairing a broken denture that had just come into my office, um, and it would probably serve the purpose, but it might not be necessarily as fun. So I thought along with showing how we repair dentures, I also wanted to show how resilient dentures can be and that they really don't break quite that easily. So let's have a look at it and see a little bit about the dentures that we're going to be breaking. And after that, let's get on to breaking some dentures. So these dentures here, these are for a person uh, that I had. Um, quite a difficult case, very small mouth, class two jaw relationship, which means that their mandible or their jaws retruded. It's, it's inside their upper jaw quite a ways. Um, severe gagger in addition to uh, several other health issues. Um, so I had made them an initial set of teeth and they were having issues adapting to the dentures uh, because of their gagging. So I'd made them a temporary set of teeth just so I could kind of fool around with things and try to figure out what I can try to do to help this person. Uh, and then after a while, after several months, I ended up making uh, a definitive set of teeth after I kind of learned what worked for this person. So these teeth here, they're not a set of teeth that anybody's actually wearing, so I'm not gonna be going and breaking somebody's actual set of teeth. These are just a couple sets of dentures that I had lying around. So as you can see, I've made this quite thin. This is only about a millimeter thick. So it's about half the thickness that it would normally would be. So I am personally expecting that these dentures are gonna break relatively easy, but let's find out. All right, so the first thing I was gonna try is we're just gonna try dropping the denture on the ground because that's something that happens quite often. And since I am at home today, uh, I am gonna have my daughter help us out. Can you say hi, hon? So dropping a denture on the ground is probably one of the most common reasons that I hear how somebody had broken their denture. Now, here at my house, I'm just dropping it on the hardwood flooring in my living room. So it might not be quite as hard as a ceramic tile that you might have in your washroom, which is the most common place that people will break their dentures. It's in their washroom. Um, but I thought we'd try to ease ourselves into breaking this denture and go up from there. The dentures being dropped from approximately, I'd say about three, three and a half feet in the air. And as you can see, when it hits the ground, it spins around and actually hits a couple or three times on the ground. So each time is has a the potential for breaking a tooth or breaking the denture itself. But here we can see that the denture actually ended up not breaking at all. Okay, so here's the denture after we dropped it. There aren't any chips in the teeth at all. There aren't any cracks in the acrylic at all. So let's move on to the next step and try to break this denture. All right, so we've just been finishing up uh, some yard work this weekend. It's uh, fall here in Canada. It's getting starting to get a little bit cool. Uh, and I thought, since I have all the yard equipment out, let's take the whippersnipper or the weed whacker, whatever you like to call it, to the denture. So first of all, let me just acknowledge the fact that it is kind of completely crazy taking a weed whacker to a denture. Uh, but as I said, that we were outside doing some yard work and I thought it'd be kind of fun. My daughter was helping me out, so I thought she might end up getting a giggle out of it all. Uh, but at the same time, I was curious because I really had no idea on what would happen if I took the weed whacker to the denture. Because on one hand, you know, you use it around the yard and you can say, hey, it'll it'll cut down some reasonably size, uh, whether it's weeds or uh, th thin, thin trees or anything like that. So I thought, well, maybe it might do something to the denture. But on the other hand, 
Well, the filament that comes out of the weed whacker is kind of reasonably pliable, so it might just end up bending right around the denture itself. So in the end, as you can see from everything here, we really succeeded in getting the denture kind of dirty and just pushing it around. It didn't really seem to do too much. All right, so as we can see, it's a little bit dirty, but there aren't any chips in the teeth anywhere at all. There aren't any cracks in the acrylic. So let's go on to the next thing. Which is? All right, so the whippersnipper didn't really seem to do much to the denture at all. So I thought, well, hockey season has just started up here uh, recently for the kids. And so our daughter's on a team in our local area. So I thought, why not let her have a shot at the puck? Literally. All right, you ready? Ready. Okay, let's go. Go for it. All right, so after our hockey practice here with the denture, I don't know if you can see that, we've got a couple of little chips in the front teeth, right on the two front teeth, right there and about right there. And this was actually our second try at the denture. So over two passes, down the driveway with the hockey stick. We've managed to put a couple small chips in the front teeth, everything else. Oh, and you know what? Oh, look, look. We broke the back part of the denture off. Where'd it go? I don't know. Okay, so we were able to break the denture by playing hockey with it. But the problem is, is that the part that uh, broke off the back here, uh, we can't find. <laughs> So in order to try to fix this denture, I need to be able to break it and actually be able to find the part to put back on. Um, so we've been looking around the yard, can't find it. So let's try another way of breaking the denture to see if we can actually keep the pieces this time. All right, so it's almost time to put the bikes away for the season. So I thought, well, let's let uh, my daughter have one last ride on her bike here and see if she can run over the denture and break it. Okay, ready whenever you are. Okay, so run over the denture with the bike, take two. Take three at running over a denture with the bike. Okay, you ready? Ready. Ready? Okay. So after running over the denture a couple of times with our bikes and after a couple of other times of kind of running over the denture with the bikes, I took one last shot of it and I lucked out and my front tire went absolutely dead center down the middle of the denture and we were finally able to break the denture and so it ended up being a nice clean break right down the center this is exactly what we've been waiting for all right so we were finally able to break the denture but i was thinking we've still got three more dentures inside that we can try to break. And I thought, you know what, let's see what it really takes to break these dentures, because that one denture did go through a little bit of abuse. Uh, we tried dropping on the floor, we tried hitting it with the whippersnipper, uh, we tried playing hockey with it, it got ran over the, by the bike uh, a little bit, uh, three times by my daughter. I ran over it once, kind of myself, I kind of missed on it, and so it took basically five tries by running over with the bike until we finally broke it. So there was one more thing I wanted to try just to see what's gonna happen. I'm pretty sure I know what's gonna happen next, but let's see what happens when we run over it with my truck. Let's see, hon. Okay, so I know you're waiting to see what happens to the denture when I run over with my truck. But what happened was when I was putting this video together, I didn't realize it was gonna be as long as it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break the video up into a couple of parts. So the truck 
running over the denture and whatever happens to the denture, I'm gonna put in my next video. So stay tuned to that one. Let's get back to how we repair dentures. Okay, so when we get started on repairing a denture, um, like I said before, a lot of people think that we just glue the denture back together and then we're all done. Uh, and we do use glue in the process though. Um, I guess some super glue. And first what I do is I try to figure out, okay, how does the denture actually go back together? And so what I do is I just use some glue and I just glue the denture back together in the beginning. This is just the very first step in the process of fixing the denture. Okay, so I know you just saw me glue the denture together, and I realized in the beginning I had said that most people think that we just glue a denture together, but that's not how the denture is repaired. Uh, we use glue in the process of doing a repair, but that's not the whole thing. We just use the glue to hold the denture together while it's in the two pieces or more pieces, whatever it might be. Now, the one thing you don't want to do yourself is do not glue your denture together yourself at home if you can avoid it. I understand that people need to get by and they need to function. And so sometimes people will think that gluing the denture together is a way that they can get through until they can get into an office to get their denture repaired. But what happens is I would say 90% of the time when I see a denture which has been glued together, it's not glued together properly. There's always a discrepancy in how the pieces meet up. And once the glue is on the denture, it does not come off. The glue will just completely bond to the acrylic. And so if we were to try to break the denture apart and re-glue it, what happens is we can't put it in a different position now because the glue's in the way. If we were to try to grind the glue off, well, now we've affected the fit of how the two pieces go back together and we just can't put them back together the way they used to be. So the best thing you can do at home, if you can at all avoid it, is do not glue your denture together and just bring the pieces in to the office. That way, we know exactly how the denture should go together. We can glue it back together and we don't need to go through any other extra work because if it's not glued together properly, then we're looking at a much more involved repair. We're dealing with taking impressions in the mouth. We're possibly dealing with taking impressions of the opposing teeth in order to fit everything back together. So we can go from a reasonably simple repair to a quite involved repair. So now the next process that we go through, after the denture has been glued back together and we know exactly where it goes, we have to now take a, or make a model of the inside of the denture. So that way everything will go back exactly the way it was. So what I'm mixing up here, this is just some uh, silicone putty and I'm gonna put it on the inside of the denture in a second just to make basically a model of, uh, of the fit of the denture. So now that we have our model made, we have an exact replica of exactly how this denture used to fit together. So that way we can go ahead and repair the denture and it'll be exactly the same way it was before. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to grind out some of this acrylic so just to make room for where we're gonna place the new acrylic. Okay, so I've ground the denture uh, on either side of where the break is. And so now we can put it back on the model and now you can get an idea of why having this repair model is needed. Because now we have the space now where we can flow the new acrylic and we have the form of how the denture fit against the tissue underneath that. So now we're ready to go ahead and put new acrylic inside there. So, what we do is we start mixing the acrylic. The acrylic is uh, basically two parts. We have the powder 
inside, which is uh, what's called a polymer. And then we have these liquid that we add to it, which is called a monomer. Uh, and you mix the two together, and then we end up with acrylic afterwards. Now normally I would be replacing this tooth on the front, but just for demonstration purposes for this repair, I'm not going to be replacing the tooth on this denture. Okay, so our acrylics all flowed in, now we can go ahead and cure this. Okay, so now the acrylic is cured now for our repair. Everything is back together. Uh, so now we just need to trim and polish this acrylic. Okay, so now that we have all of the acrylic trimmed up after we place the new acrylic in there, now we need to polish this to make it nice and smooth again. All right, so here we have the finished product. The denture is polished. It is all back together in one piece. And apart from there being a slight difference in the color of the acrylic between the repair acrylic and the original, um, this is basically all good to go. The person would be able to start chewing with this again. And uh, yeah, we are done. So thanks so much everybody for dropping by and watching the video uh, and thank you so much for all the support that you guys give me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I never thought that this channel would ever have, right now we're at 7,100 subscribers. I never thought that would happen in a million years. And I get messages and emails and phone calls from you guys from all across North America. So I really appreciate the support. Uh, but please stay tuned for the next video. I'm gonna be showing what happens when we run over the denture with my truck. So keep an eye out for that one and I'll see you guys sometime soon. Take care.